The development of the placenta begins during week one at the blastocyst stage. Five cells organize on the periphery of the embryo forming the trophoblast. These cells will eventually become the placenta. This is the first differentiation step in human development. As the blastocyst inserts into the endometrium, it breaks through the maternal tissue and invades the mother's blood vessels. Lacunae are formed in the syncyo trophoblast. Lacunae are cavities that will eventually become the placental circulation. Lacunae grow all the way around the conceptus as the entire conceptus is in the endometrium. The blood from the mother's artery will flow into the lacunae. The lacunae will fuse to form the inner villa space. The maternal blood is forcing way through what is called the primitive placenta. Decidualization occurs early in pregnancy. It is an adaptation of the uterus to enable implantation. The cells of the endometrium change properties and become larger. Stroma cells of the endometrium are transformed into decidual cells. The decidual cells will provide nutrition for the embryo, protect the uterus against invasion, and produce hormones. Decidualization occurs over the entire surface of the uterus. The three regions are decidua basalis, decidua capsularis, and decidua peritalis. Chorionic villi will form in the inner villa space in order to give a maximal area of contact with the maternal blood. The cytotrophoblast rapidly divides to form a bump on the wall of the chorion to form the primary villi. During week 3, the somatic mesoderm pushes through forming the secondary villi. The mesodermal cord differentiates to form the blood vessels. The villi initially surrounds the entire chorion. Eventually, some of the villi will be choked out of existence forming a smooth chorion. Many of the villi will go on to form the definitive placenta. Vasculogenesis occurs in order to form the blood vessels. The surrounding mesenchyme secretes FGF2 and VEGF. The mesoderm responds to FGF2 and differentiates into hemangioblasts. Hemangioblasts form the blood islands that form to fuse the primitive blood vessels. Hemangioblasts respond to VEGF and give rise to angioblasts, then the endothelial cells lining the blood vessels. Some hemangioblasts don't respond to VEGF and give rise to pluripotent hematopoietic stem cells that give rise to blood cells. Angiogenesis occurs to form new blood vessels from existing blood vessels. In order for exchange of molecules to occur prior to 20 weeks of pregnancy, molecules would need to pass from the mother's blood vessels through the syncytotrophoblast and then the cytotrophoblast into the connective tissues to the fetal blood system. As pregnancy progresses, import and export rates must increase. The change in the placental membranes allows for the molecules to go from the mother's blood vessels to the syncytotrophoblast directly into the fetal blood. The placenta will function in providing nutrition to the fetus and depositing wastes. Since the baby can't breathe on its own, the placenta will ensure that the oxygen is moved into the baby's bloodstream through the umbilical vein and carbon dioxide is carried away through the umbilical arteries. The placenta also functions as an endocrine gland, producing lots of hormones. The placenta has two faces, the maternal surface and the fetal surface. The maternal surface has cotyledons made up from chorionic villi. The maternal tissues is also referred to as the septa. The fetal surface is covered with a shiny amnion layer. One would wonder why the mother does not reject the fetus. It is due to the complement receptor related gene Y that encodes protein cry. The protein is present around the trophoblast and the placenta. Cry acts to prevent two complement proteins, C3 and C4, from marking and attacking foreign cells. The placenta will aid in the development of the fetus throughout pregnancy. Ultrasounds can show to have white flecks on the placenta. They are calcium deposits that show signs of maturation and aging of the placenta. The calcium deposits can be replaced with fibrous tissue. Calcium deposits can also harden or block the maternal blood vessels. In most cases, calcification does not affect the functioning placenta and the fetus is not harmed. After nine months of pregnancy, it is time for parturition, the delivery of the baby and the placenta from the uterus to the outside world. The birth of the new baby brings an end to the placenta's life. Do you believe in the afterlife? The placenta does. 
The placenta comes back in beauty products to aid in anti-aging and skin whitening, in hair products such as shampoo and conditioner, in food products such as lasagna and in other shapes and sizes. Thank you.